it has been a very long time since we last talked about Manjaro on this channel. And to my surprise, they haven't let the SSL certs expire. They haven't DDoSed Arch Linux. Everything for about a year and a half now has just been good. Which, considering the track record of Manjaro, is really impressive. And today we are not breaking that streak. Instead, we're talking about a project they are working on. Now, I'm not entirely sure why it was first publicly announced like this, but like everybody else, Manjaro has a take on the CrowdStrike situation. But this blog post kind of misses the point about what CrowdStrike was, and it's a very like surface level look at the situation. So we're going to skip over all the CrowdStrike stuff and instead talk about the Atomic Update Age. Linux itself is already a highly dependable operating system running on billions of systems. We at Manjaro put a lot of effort into bringing this amazing technology to as many private users and businesses as possible. We know that aspects like security and provisioning are important for businesses to choose Linux on their client systems. For that reason, we are developing a new version of Manjaro aimed at businesses that will give them the most reliable and easily fleet manageable solution possible. Manjaro Immutable, a declarative immutable version of Manjaro with atomic updates. Now an immutable distro based on Arch Linux is certainly not a new thing. Most notably, there are things like the Steam Deck operating system. There's also projects like BlenderOS, which is very container focused and all about blending together packages from different distros. So you want some packages on Ubuntu and packages on Fedora. Well, why don't you just run containers for those distros and now you have them. And there's less known projects like Arcane Linux, an opinionated GNOME centered experience with minimal packages installed, yet tries to be a full featured desktop. This is not a comprehensive list, and I'm sure that others do exist as well, but these are a couple that I'm personally interested in. And here is your marketing and PR speech. This operating system gives the power back to your businesses. Your IT division decides when to update which systems. You decide if the update is functioning as you expect, roll it out now or later or if you need to do a rollback. And such a rollback is doable with ease thanks to the atomic updates. No lock-in, no sudden untested updates pushed past your IT department, breaking your systems. This is referring to the fact that in the CrowdStrike situation, it was caused by an update being shipped out by some random person at CrowdStrike. No one is taking responsibility for it. And that broke all of these systems. Now, that is entirely possible to happen on Linux as well. I've got a video coming out, or it's already come out, about the exact same thing happening on Linux. So let's go through the graphic. Everything starts with upstream Arch Linux. By the way, this is already tested and vetted. Now, I would disagree with this phrasing. There is testing repos on Arch Linux, and testing is done. But Arch Linux is a fairly fast-moving rolling distro. And most of the time, it is fine. But sometimes issues do slip through the cracks and do get shipped out to users. Manjaro should be doing additional testing to make sure that everything is good, because Manjaro does have more resources to make this possible. Arch Linux is pretty much just a volunteer-run project, but Manjaro does actually have employees. And then preferably, if something goes wrong, contribute those changes back upstream and make sure that everything is good for everybody in the chain. Now, most people running Manjaro are not running the next stage, Manjaro Edge. Instead, they're running Manjaro Stable. I don't particularly like calling it stable. It's just slower releasing Arch. Now, Edge is not really a term used in the context of Manjaro that often. The way that I understand it, though, is this is referring to things like the unstable and, to a lesser extent, the testing branch as well. So, in Manjaro Unstable, 
it gets updates slower than Arch Linux, with package syncing being done multiple times a day. But if you're on Unstable, you're effectively running a version of Arch Linux that has a couple of additional patches and a couple of additional packages not present in the Arch Linux repo. But besides that, it's basically updating as quickly as Arch Linux would be. Keep in mind though that with any unstable branch, those additional cherry pick patches and that additional software is not shipping out to the regular users yet. So whilst the regular Arch stuff is gonna be pretty much fine, it'll be in the state that it was in over in Arch Linux. That additional stuff could very well cause problems. Now the next thing, Manjaro Stable, this is what you see when you go to the Manjaro website. You have this pyramid here, base, which is referring to Arch Linux, unstable, testing, and then when all of that is done, then it moves into Manjaro Stable. This is much slower moving, not slow to like Debian extent or Ubuntu extent or even Pop! OS extent, but it is a lot slower than what you're going to see on Arch Linux. With this, you hopefully get additional testing, and a lot of times problems that existed in Arch Linux, by the time it makes its way into Manjaro Stable, usually those problems have already been dealt with and don't also end up being shipped to the Manjaro users, but at the same time, it causes additional problems because if you're using the AUR, the AUR is built against Arch Linux. It is built against the current version and only the current version. So if you're running packages that are from a few days ago, a week ago, two weeks ago, sometimes building packages ends up breaking. In most cases, it is completely fine. But if something has very fast moving dependencies and relies on those fast moving dependencies, don't expect things to always work. And now we have the new one, Manjaro Immutable. This is still a work in progress, so it's not something you can download today, but it has all of the normal benefits of a regular immutable system. You have atomic updates, so instead of doing individual package updates, and potentially one of those updates can be bad, everything is updated as one big block, like you would see on Android, for example. And then if there is a problem, you can just roll back to a previous version and everything is in the state like it was in then. Not your user files, but all of the applications you have installed. It also has limitations on runtime configuration because a lot of the packages you have are part of that image. Now... You can generally do overlay packages where it's done in this special way where they interact with the part that is writable. Also, you just have general confusion about how to install packages because it is going to need to be a little bit different. That doesn't mean that Immutable or Atomic or whatever you want to call these distros are bad. They just have a different use case. Generally, it's best not to be installing overlay packages if you can, if you know what to do and know how to build custom images, it's best to have the applications in the image itself. But nowadays there are tooling like Distrobox, which makes setting up things like Docker and Podman really easy. So if you want to install applications instead of doing an overlay package, in many cases it might just be better to have them in a container. Now earlier I mentioned Arcane Linux as an example of Immutable Arch. And I mention it as more than just an example because this post got shared on the Arch Linux subreddit. And as most posts related to Manjaro tend to do, uh, this one got deleted by the moderators because I don't know. Manjaro has nothing to do with Arch, even though it's based on Arch. Either way, someone pointed out the fact that Arcane Linux already does this. And the Arcane Linux developer pointed out. Yes, we do, but also Manjaro adopted the tech made by Arcane Linux. According to Philip, the guy behind Manjaro, they were previously using squash FS images with overlay file systems on top. Now, I'm curious to see what actually comes out of this, because what I'm seeing right now is basically Manjaro Silverblue, which is 
cool, I guess, if you care about an arch base, or if you really, really like Manjaro and really, really trust the developers. But at least from what I'm seeing, it doesn't seem to bring anything new to the table. It's kind of like other people are doing immutable, so we're going to do immutable as well. Now, these comments from the Arcane Linux dev, they weren't just comments to the void. The first one was a response to some random person pointing out Arcane Linux. But the others were responses to Foxbron from the Arch Linux team. And Foxbron kind of has a chip on his shoulder when it comes to Manjaro. When the Arcane Linux dev pointed out that Manjaro is building something off the tech they made, he says, of course, they don't actually have the technical know-how to do any of this without relying 100% on existing volunteer efforts. Come on, that is very condescending. Show some love for your FOSS friends. This is how FOSS works. Arcane wouldn't exist without me stealing from the Arch repos either. I don't have time to package and maintain a full distro. They actually did have another immutable home build implementation, but they liked mine better. And then he proceeds to absolutely tear into Manjaro. Why was 32-bit Manjaro announced as dead when Arch stopped supporting 32-bit packages? Why did they silently continue the support when Arch Linux 32 was announced? Why did they announce a RISC-V port even though the Arch RISC-V port is clearly labelled as experimental. It's not condescending, it's a factual statement. You haven't stolen anything. You have done original work on top of Arch. I always love this, like, discussion around stealing things in the FOSS world, when what's actually happening is people using the licences of the software as they are written. Like, nowhere in these licenses are you required to make changes to software. Are you required to build forks off them? Are you required to do anything actually productive with the software? It's not stealing. It never has been and it never will be. And look, I like to tear into Manjaro as much as the next person, but I think at least be fair with how you're tearing into them. It's fun to tear into them when they DDoS Arch Linux, or when they go and forget their SSL certs and somehow manage to let them expire, even though there are automated ways to make sure that never happens. But when it comes to following the licenses as they're stated, and yes, maybe it's a little bit scummy to have this really popular distro and not send as much as you should back upstream. I can at least agree with that. Maybe it's scummy to pretend like you're doing something entirely original when all you're doing is just repackaging something. But they are allowed to do so. Now, immutable distros are not for everyone and shouldn't be sold as such. I know there's some people out there that want them to be the future and everybody to use them. But that's just never going to happen. There is a lot of cases where they simply won't make sense. Like this recent case, for example, where there is this big user base that want to run effectively kernel level antivirus and have updates get pushed out when updates need to get pushed out. Now, that is going to cause problems when these updates don't get tested. But it is something that all of these businesses did sign up for and hopefully, no could happen. Now, they probably trusted CrowdStrike to do a better job with it, but having an immutable distro available, this is just not going to be suitable in cases where you actually do want that level of access. But regarding an immutable Manjaro, I will be keeping an eye on this, and if any news happens to come my way, I will absolutely talk about it. But let me know, would you ever trust Manjaro with an immutable distro? I'm sure people are going to have some um, interesting comments about Manjaro and its history. I would love to know. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, subscribe to Libera Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Man, jar, yes.